Welcome back to Film Files. In today's file, we will be uncovering a historical drama released in the year 2014 titled Houdini. Sit back, and let's dive in. This is the story of a man who was once a normal magician but then became an incredible escape artist. The man's name is Eric, but he doesn't go by that name anymore. He now goes by Harry Houdini. The show starts with him held in shackles at the top of a bridge, and then he jumps into the frozen river below and begins to free himself. The movie begins 17 years before Harry jumps off a bridge. Harry and his wife, Bess, arrive at a brothel to perform. He's forcefully put in handcuffs which he easily escapes from. From that moment, he began putting his interests into being an escape artist, escaping from all sorts of shackles, even without wearing any clothes. He rapidly became more popular with his escape tricks. Harry then tells his wife that he would never want to be like his father, who was a nobody. Back in Wisconsin, in 1886, Harry is with his brother Dash, and they are watching a magic show on the streets. Harry begins performing street shows, and people like what he does, and he gets a good amount of money from it. He rushes home and gives most of it to his mum. He loves her and would do anything for her. Harry then leaves his home to pursue his career. His greatest escape was leaving his home. After a while, Harry reunites with his family in Detroit, but his father dies a few years later. He continues performing magic tricks with his brother as his partner. Harry then falls in love with a dancer, her name is Bess, and after a while, they get married, and Bess then becomes his new partner while he leaves his brother behind. Harry meets Jim Collins in a magic trick store, and Jim tells him how much he changed his life and then begins helping him invent new tricks and breathtaking escape techniques. Harry performs in a California prison where he is shackled all over and has his mouth tied while locked in a cell. When everyone leaves, he takes off the fake finger he is wearing, which has a lockpick in it that he used in escaping. He also performs a trick where he is submerged headfirst into a cuboid cell full of water and has to hold his breath as long as possible. Harry successfully escapes the cell and appears as a stunt team member. In Washington, D.C., the United States Secret Service director, John Wilkie, suspects that Harry is a spy because he's a Hungarian Jew. Harry then has to get involved in espionage and works for the United States secretly. Harry travels to London and meets William Melvin, who is John's British counterpart in MI5. He asks Harry to gather info from all his tours. William then tells Harry that his passport was adjusted, making him legally an American. Harry gets home late that night, and his wife begins to suspect that he's cheating on her. He has a nightmare that night where his dad shoots him. Flashback to 1886, Harry was a sorcerer's apprentice. Harry finds out that the sorcerer is just a liar. The sorcerer then tells Harry that all magicians are liars, and the better the magician, the better the lie. Harry then has the same nightmare where he gets shot by his dad. He wakes up and throws the Book of Illusions into the fire. After some shows in Berlin, the Kaiser requests a private show with Harry. Harry then attempts the infamous bullet catch in front of the Kaiser, which he successfully performs. The trick's secret is that the ramrod used in loading the gun had a magnet on it, which Jim uses to remove the bullet while loading the gun. Harry goes to Budapest, where he meets Riley. Riley is involved in the secret service. Harry tells him what he saw and heard while with the Kaiser. He tells Riley about the Kaiser's preparations for an upcoming war. Harry then ends the meeting as he is in a hurry to go welcome his mom. As he walks down the street with his wife, he sees a beautiful dress meant for Queen Victoria. Harry buys the dress for his mom, and she looks incredible in it. He hosts a small occasion in her honor and treats her like a queen. He then performs a trick in front of her and showers her with gold coins. Harry travels to Moscow, where he's with the royal family, performing tricks for them. Rasputin, a religious man with the royal family, doubts Harry's abilities, so he decides to go higher. Harry performs a trick that makes the ancient tower bells ring. The entire royal family is in shock as they hear the bells ring. Even Rasputin couldn't believe what had just happened. Harry returns London and briefs William about Moscow and how Rasputin was in control of the entire royal family. He also explains how he did the bell trick. He had Jim stay in a nearby building with binoculars waiting for his signal. Once he saw the little girl pull the rope, he shot at the bell with a sniper. 
He also said that he had switched the paper he picked with one he had prepared already. William tells him that they needed to get some important documents in a safe in the German embassy. Harry has a show at the Adelphi Theatre beside the embassy. He performs a trick where he has to escape from an airtight safe but sneaks into the German embassy where he steals the documents from the safe and goes back to the theatre. He surprises his wife for their 10th anniversary, but she is very unhappy. Harry is performing in a theatre, but there is barely anyone in the audience. People have lost interest in his shows and went to watch comedy movies. The applause from the crowd was shallow. In the dressing room, Harry argues with Jim about the performance. The owner of the theatre is then talking to Harry and tells him that people are losing interest in him and that he should start having shows in a smaller theatre. The owner tells Harry to see the writing on the wall, but Harry yells that he is the one who writes the writing on the wall. Harry is watching a comedy show with Jim in a movie house. He doesn't seem impressed and begins to think of something to get his audience back. Harry then gets a bright idea of jumping into a frozen lake while chained. Bess tells him she shouldn't be involved and leaves. Harry eventually performs the stunt and barely makes it out alive, but he almost dies in the water. After the performance, he begins thinking of the next act which he'll perform. He then decides to escape from a straitjacket while upside down. After this stunt, Bess makes him promise not to get into any life-threatening stunts again, or she'd leave him. At a circus in New York in the year 1914, Harry does an incredible trick by making an elephant disappear right before everyone's eyes using a red veil. A stranger later meets Harry and asks for a show to be done in Europe. The man is involved in espionage. Harry then leaves his home, but his mother fears that she might pass away before he gets to see her again. In London, Harry briefs William on some of the things he's found and how the enemy plans to sink civilians and warships using submarines. In the Empire Theatre in London, Harry introduces Sir Arthur and Lady Conan Doyle, spiritualists. Harry performs a trick where he walks through a brick wall, and he achieves this by sliding through a space under while the curtains are closed. Sir Arthur insists that Harry use his spiritual powers to perform his tricks, but Harry denies his claims and insists they are simple magic tricks. After the show, Harry receives a telegram from his brother that his mother had just passed away, breaking Harry's heart. The war they were desperately trying to prevent eventually broke out. After the war, Harry is in Hollywood reviewing a show he starred in when he sees a woman who looks like his mother. Harry then decides to try and communicate with her from the dead and fish out those who used the medium work to scam families who had just lost loved ones in the recently concluded war. After a while of exposing fake mediums, Harry publishes a book on fake mediums and their methods so that the general public may know and avoid being scammed. The book launch holds in Washington with a small press conference, and Harry put up a $10,000 challenge to any medium who could successfully trick him or who could make him communicate with his mother. Harry performs another stunt in New Jersey where he has to escape from a cannon before it fires. He pulls off the stunt, and the audience is impressed. Later that night, he's having a conversation with Sir Arthur and his wife. He encounters a medium who says that he is going to die soon. Sir Arthur's wife, who claims to be a medium, tells Harry that he can help her communicate with his dead mother. After the scenes, Harry confirms that Lady Doyle is a fraud because it was his birthday and his mum never forgot his birthday, but it wasn't mentioned throughout. Harry then goes to Boston to meet one of the most famous mediums named Marjorie. The scenes ends, and Harry immediately proves to them how the secession was fake and how all they were doing was a scam. Marjorie goes to Harry's hotel and tries to seduce him, but he resists and asks her to get out of his room. She then tells him that there is a curse on his head and that the mediums will use his name however he wants when he's dead. Hay was truly afraid for the first time in his life and didn't know why. Harry goes to Detroit, Michigan, where he performs the stunt in which he submerges himself underwater head first again. In doing this, he sustains an injury to his leg, and a doctor confirms that his leg is fractured. Harry chooses to ignore the doctor's prescription of him wearing a cast and says he must perform that evening. He asks the doctor to leave and has a few students come in to draw his portrait. As they draw, a young man walks in and begins asking Harry questions about Lady Doyle. The man then suddenly punched Harry on his stomach multiple times and got dragged away by the students. Harry refused to get checked after the incident and tried to perform his stunt, but he collapsed and was rushed to a hospital. 
After the surgery, the doctor confirmed that Harry had a punctured appendix. The infection had spread from it, and the doctors could not do anything further. Harry is with his wife in the hospital and asks her to sing him a song she usually sang for him when they were younger. She sings it with tears in her eyes, and he asks her to stop crying. Soon after, Harry passes away. Jim is seen crying and devastated because the man who changed his life so much was gone. Harry died at 52, and Bess never got over his death. She only survived him for 12 years after his death. The end. Thank you for watching. Subscribe and hit that notification button for more files like this.